recording, but I want to make sure that I don't blur in and out. So, so this is basically a sardine can. I have a couple different varieties here. Um, they come in all different shapes and sizes. And what I did with mine is I actually cut the back of it, if you can see that, and I made its own little stand. Now this went to Phoenix and back and got pretty beat up in my suitcase, but it still works pretty good. So that is what we're going to do. So basically, first of all, what I did with this, and I hardly ever measure a thing, but with this, I wanted to. So I basically, I measured dead center and I cut a little tab and I'll show you. These are very easy to cut through and I actually already pre-cut this one. Watch me not be able to cut it. Yep, and I just cut it all the way down. Yeah, this one's a little bit harder than my other ones, but I always protect your table. Okay, you get the point, right? Okay, I'm not going to threaten cutting myself here on air, but this is the one we're actually going to do today. And at the end of the show, I will be giving two of these away because I have enough to make two. So I cut it. And the first thing we're going to do is basically just apply a quick layer of gesso. You don't have to cover it completely up because the particular rust technique that we're going to do does that pretty well. Um, so seeing while I'm painting, we'll kind of talk about some of the rust. Today I'm going to use the one that Deco Art Andy Skinner does with Deco Art, um, and it's the fluid acrylic, the medium from the medium line, and um, Finnebear, and I actually kind of got a bunch of the rust paste out. There's Finnebears we have here. I've used that. Um, Dusty Attic has their own rusting powder that you can use. Um, there is a all-natural process you can do, which is uh, white vinegar and um, water. So it's half and half. I do have some pieces currently right now sitting in that solution on some muslin, um, thinking that I can maybe dye the muslin at the same time with some rust, but uh, we'll, we'll try it. That, I'll let you know if that works. It hasn't really done much, really. So, and you don't need to actually get the center because we will be covering the center up. And it's basically just to get rid of the yellow from the, the writing on the package. And I'm just using plain old gesso. And that's pretty much the gist of it. And we'll let that dry. Now, I did choose two different relics to use. If anybody is familiar with the relics, um, Sandra Effortson does them. She, um, they're actually molded from real history, relics from we talked about it over the weekend, and her oldest one is about 800 to 900 years old. So she casts them, and then she makes them. I think there's a story behind all of them. It would be interesting to know. So we're going to do, we're going to use the medallions. Um, and I'm choosing to use the Deco Art. Oh, I broke that. Um, because of the fine, intricate details on the relics. I think with the rust paste, it's a little bit thicker. You don't get to see those those details as much. But um, we're going to start on the relic, and then we'll move to the tin can. So to get the actual texture itself, we're going to use the textured sand paste from Deco Art. This has a very thin consistency. It's actually quite smooth. And I just actually apply it with my my finger. Um, Olivia and I went and uh, did a class with Andy Skinner down in Chicago with Tracy Weinzeppel and um, this was one of the techniques that we learned and I actually I like it. 
I like it a lot. It's actually kind of relaxing. You can sit here and just relax and I gotta get we'll do we'll do both pieces. You can blot it on there. It doesn't have to be completely covered. And then we'll just kind of heat set it a little bit. I want to get some of this off. Just kind of working it into the spaces there. And then we're going to actually do that to the tin itself too, just sporadically. On the edges around it. And I'm not, if um, there's a question, we'll have to, uh, hello Tiffany, I'm not really paying attention to the chat, I'm sorry. The nice thing about this technique is it's fairly fast too. I just want to get it good and rusted. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to heat set quick. Okay. Um, of course, the Andy Skinner has a ton of videos on his um, YouTube page that has all different techniques. Make sure that's dry. Lemon Creation, hello. What's your real name, Lemon Creation? So we know. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to do our first, I just got to get this dry. We're going to take our first coat, and actually it's only three colors that we're going to use. It's going to be the Burnt Umber, the Payne's Gray, and then the Quinacodone Gold. Uh, that's my daughter's favorite word is the Quinacodone Gold, by the way. She loves that word. One of her favorite. And I just use these palettes here to... And no rhyme or reason, you just dab it, get it all in there, and this will be the first coat. And like I said, this goes fairly fast. And with this finer texture, sand texture paste, it's um, it gets into the cracks and crevices a lot easier, I think. But like I said, there's no right or wrong. Um, paste to use. It's, I guess it's up to the artist and what type of project you're doing at that time. And, um, you know, in the, the amount of surface you're also using. So, and you don't even, because we're going to be doing another color, it doesn't necessarily have to even if you got white spots, we can cover it with the other two colors. And this is essentially a very um, neat technique. So and I don't have to do the whole back because I am going to cover that with uh, paper. We got to hide our hole from our um, homemade stand there. 
So, and I did cut, I did pre-cut a lot of things just because I don't think you guys want to watch me fussy cut. Not really. Hey, Julianne. Cat, hello, cat. Nice of you to join us. What time do you have to pick your boy up from school? My kids will be home at uh, about 3.30, my kids will be home. And we'll get the inside here, and then this, this color will be done. So, and the reason I'm blotting versus the strokes is because that sand texture, um, oh, it was a little wet there. I want to get into that really good. Try to make it so you guys can see it there. Okay, so there's that. And I am actually not even, I usually don't even heat set these when I'm done with the color because I end up blending. In 10 minutes? Oh, cat. Well, it's recorded, so if you if you do want to catch the show later, you can. Now we're going to use the Payne's Gray. And basically, we're just going to be blending just to add a little bit darker. And it doesn't take much at all, if you guys can kind of see that. I'll lift it up here in a second. Yeah, we're just kind of blending a little bit, just to add a little bit darker. And the quinacridone gold. I'll get the tin can in a second. I want to heat set that a little bit. Okay. And you still get the details from the relic. This is why I like that technique. Is it going to focus? I don't know if it's going to focus. So those are pretty much rusted out. So now I'm going to just go to the can here. I'm going to heat set the can a little bit because that was a little dry yet. I love this rust technique. Oh, Elaine, am I still on? She lost the feed. Okay. I my last U stream was horrid, so I'm hoping no problems today. And these tin cans do get hot. Okay, so I'm going to take the Payne's Gray and just kind of fill in. That's still a little wet. And so now we're just going to be blending between the Payne's Gray and the Quinacridone Gold. And it does get dark here fairly early, so if I need to flip a light on over this, then just let me know. Um, these paints are very highly pigmented, so that doesn't take a lot of paint. A little goes a long way. And if you can hear the snow plow trucks going by outside, we did get about two inches of snow today. So it did calm down a bit. Okay, now I'm going to take some Quinn Gold. Um, the paint, I started out 
um, Joanne with the texture sand paste to give it that the actual texture of it. And then I'm just simply painting over that with just some blending um, to make that rust effect between the three colors. And that's pretty much cover up my little white spots bleeding through. And I didn't set my alarm either to watch my time. But how is that looking? So now I just have to work on the inside a little bit. So whatever works for your project, whether it's the, the pre-made pastes, um, the powder that's available. Now I've actually never tried this on metal, the dusty attic powder. I've tried it on chipboard. It works very well on chipboard. So like I said, it's all dependent on what type of project you, you're going to be working on. Um, there's no right or wrong. It's whatever you feel in your heart. Okay. So how's that looking? Looks pretty rusted to me, I think. So I'm just going to heat set these real quick and then we'll get into um, actually just assembling it. And and then we'll be done. <laughs> no, I'll I'll make it last a little bit longer. Yep, just the three the three colors. And you can tell my daughter uses these because they're they're completely covered with paint everywhere. So this is the the combo. Oh, I gotta paint that. Let's see if I can. No, up. that. Okay. Thank you, Karen. I love this technique. Oh. Okay. Um, I did add a little bit of the um, metallic luster, the brilliant turquoise, and this was just to uh, give it a little sheen to match the gems that I did put on the relic. So if you've used these, they have a tendency to get hard and kind of dry out. They actually reactivate quite well with just a little squirt of water. And so I just kind of gently brushed to give it almost a patina look. Oh, I'm stuck to my paper towel. I gotta do my flap. I'll do my flap. And it was just a little bit. Okay. So we can actually start layering. I just have to find my piece of paper. I'm not sure where it is. So here's the one for the back. I already pre-cut that and I distressed it. So we're going to actually cover up our hole. And then this one, I couldn't do it all ahead of time. 
Yep, Taurus said there that's the deco art fluid acrylics on those. Um, they're fairly reasonably priced. Um, the, there's a couple of them that are a little bit more spendy, and I think it has to do with the amount of pigment that they have in it. And I'm definitely not the pro when it comes to the deco art, but so there's the center. Oh, my camera's being all funky. So now we're just going to layer, 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 layer. Um, I already pre-cut, and I'm going to use the Scrap Berries Edge of Town collection. And I already cut out a bunch of goodies for that. And I'm going to um, add some gears from Creative Embellishment. We're gonna just spray those. I didn't. I thought about rusting them. Also doing this technique with them, I just didn't want too much rust. So I didn't want to pull away from the actual project. So I simply just used some spray with these ones, and that's all I did. So and then these are the small, the medium, and the large gears. And I just simply sprayed them. But let's start gluing down here. Okay. And if anybody knows me, I normally stand. Vivian, hello. <laughs> nice to see you here. I think I just saw you. <laughs> I didn't distress the edges. Better do that quick. Um, I'm using the Fabri-Tec beacons, in case anybody's curious. So then now we'll cover up our hole. I'll go through and I'll touch up where I and I actually want to flip it where the writing's the right way. So there's our tin can. Um, and I don't know if anybody loves layering. I love layering, but it's probably the hardest thing for me to do because I want it to lay just right. I do use um, my packaging to help pop up the paper. And we are going to put, um, so basically I'm just going to start layering paper. And I'm, am I missing anything in the chat? I think my phone would have gone off if I was. So, and I have a variety of keys, which I wasn't sure which one was going to look the best. This, this big one too, which I just picked up at Michael's. So we'll see once I get it layered a bit. So. Commercial, Karen? I, I get those all the time. There's apparently an app you can download that you can get rid of the commercials, and I'm not sure if anybody is on. I know Barbara Patrick has that app on hers where she doesn't have commercials. I don't think she's on today. And I'm just... Layering... 
trying to think what else am I missing? I have to look at my example here. Oh, we'll just add some of this. You love the wing one? We'll have to see how it looks on here. We'll experiment. We'll get it layered up a little bit. Yeah, in the, the, the keys, I know you can find them elsewhere, but the two places that I've gotten my metal embellishments, both of them are out of business. So um, I'm sure you can find them online somewhere. It's just a matter of Googling and searching. So... Um, I do have some, I have some muslin in here. And with the muslin is what I did was I actually just cut a couple little patches of it. I got it a little bit wet. I shrunk it up like this. I opened it up. And I took my Distress Ink, God, I got a mess on my table, and I just simply did a swoosh like this, and that was all I did to add a little bit of color to that. Swoosh, is that a, squish is a good word, yeah? And it just kind of dirtied it up a little bit. Um, I have some very old Norwegian paper that I also used. I liked the writing on it. Distress it a little bit with the ink distressor. Okay, what are we thinking for the keys? But we also have the, the relic that goes in the front, so we have to kind of think about that process too that I kind of think I like the hearts one. I need a couple more layers though. <laughs> Got to uncover some of this. Okay. Oh, let's see. I think we're going to use the heart key. That's what we're going to do. Get 
sun. I need to have that relic pop up a little bit more, so I'm gonna use some thicker cardboard to help with that. This isn't really what I wanted, but it'll work. Okay. Oh, Yasmin's going to send her books <laughs> to you. They're nice pages. The writing is very unique. So I just want to build up so that relic sits on that. Just like that. So, and then we have one more little muslin that we're going to distress a bit. My stuff keeps falling on the floor. And let, just let me know if it's getting too dark. And some of you will laugh. I have um, one of the gals at work. She brings me costume jewelry. And um, some of you may be upset by this, but I tear it apart. And so this piece I have used um, and taken the gems and everything out of it because that's what we're going to actually use on the center. I actually have two of them. I wasn't sure which one I was going to use, but I think there's just the diamond shaped one, or there's one with a little bling on it, which I'm not sure if I like the bling. We'll just use the diamond shaped one for now, or the teardrop. We're not done yet. Yeah, that's some old, it's some old paper, very old paper. I use it whenever I can. So a couple other little added points. I do have some uh, nail heads from the Junkyard Collection from Prima, and I just kind of nipped and tucked and just to give it a little bit more details. Let me grab one more. And I will finish this um, this one here with this relic because um, these will be the two that we're going to give away at the end of the day here. So, and I will ship anywhere in the U.S. and the world. Wherever you are, I will ship. So, okay. And it's only 1336. <laughs> Maybe I need to add some more layers. Um, maybe. <laughs> I could. I could add some more layers. Let me do this. I'm throwing stuff here. Let me add. Um, 
And there is one other thing that I did add to give it a little bit more detail. Um, I took some plain matte medium in any company will work. There's no, there's, they all have pros, they all have cons. Anyways, it doesn't really matter to me. It's usually whatever is available. And um, I have some of these copper mica flakes, and I actually don't even know where I found these. There's no name on it, there's no nothing. And I simply just um, added some extra flakes throughout Probably not that much matte medium, but and so I just take a little bit of the medium, pick some up. I got a lot in the corner here, and put them, put them down. So I hope you all enjoyed this project. Something a little bit different to try. Um, actually, Yasmin did one of these tins um, a little while ago, and I'm like, I gotta do one. And they are actually quite fun. So I added the extra twist by making its own little stand. Um, if you're like me with art, I have tons of art all over. I'm running out of stands to put it on. So, there. Okay, bye Karen. We'll see you next week. Uh, okay. Okay, what do you think? couple things I do have to rust the back ledge or little leg we have there otherwise and I'll I'll touch it up before I, I ship it out but a fun little altered tin um, yes you you could I would say anything there lemon craft or lemon creation lemon craft um, did you find the video, Yasmin? The Andy Skinner video? Okay. So, we will alter this one. Um, I'll alter this off air, and then I'll send this one out too. So we'll have two giveaways. So um, let me flip the, any questions, first of all? Okay. Um, my desk is trashed. Um, let me flip the camera and then I'm going to stop the recording and we'll just do the whole number system. I'll pick two numbers and we'll go from there. So let me flip the camera. See, I have all kinds of art up there. Yeah. Anyways, I run out of stands. Okay. Oh, I got to move it a little bit. Okay. That's fine. Okay, so let me stop the recording. Let's do, seeing we have two of them, let's do um, 1 to 30. Let me write my numbers down. Okay, that pen doesn't work. Okay, I got them. I can't work in a mess either, Joanne. 